tell ya. <laughs> guys, it's Dino, Digispin Crypto, and welcome to the show. Now, we got a great guest with us today, and you're going to want to know about it. Then this is Jason from, uh, Jason Brink from Gala Games, and he was kind enough to spend a few minutes with us today. He's going to tell us about Gala Games, which is an NFT type of based game. You get to own the property that uh, you purchase or earn. And Jason's going to give us all the details and the goodies. Now, he's right above me here, or right there, <laughs> and uh, uh, we'll be able to go through it. I'm going to try to challenge him with as many questions as possible so that we can learn as much as possible about Gala Games and why you want to play these these games. And uh, I see lots of good stuff. Now, uh, Jason, uh, I just want to prep you. I did get a chance to log on and everything, but introduce yourself. Wonderful. Tell us about Gala Games, uh, what you guys are about, and uh, let's, let's, let's get the initial spiel. Absolutely. Well, my name is Jason Brink. I've been working in the blockchain industry for, since 2014. Uh, I initially started in blockchain looking at ways to use blockchain to cause uh, lower end economic uh, growth. Uh, essentially using blockchain to disrupt the very corrupt foreign aid cycle, which actually weirdly led me into eventually working with Gala Games. With Gala Games, we're looking at giving the world ownership of their in-game assets. There's 2.4 billion gamers out in the world, and most of these gamers have never experienced actually owning stuff that they play with. And so Gala Games was founded by Eric Schiermeyer, one of the co-founders of Zynga. Uh, and our lead game developer is Michael McCarthy, the guy who was responsible for uh, Farmville 2. Uh, both of them are focused on building games and building platforms that are designed to handle millions of daily active users. Uh, we kind of approach things from a video game first uh, ethos, I guess you would say, uh, rather than most most blockchain games are sort of tech demos created by blockchain people and they want to be able to show that they could, you know, be used in a game. We design AAA style games first and then integrate blockchain into them so that it, it provides a better and more seamless experience for the user. Nice, nice. Now, how long has Gala Games been around? Because I'm going to be honest with you, uh, when I met you at the Digicon show, it was the first time I was introduced to Gala Games, and I was unaware. Right. So is, is right. it you? Have you guys been around a while? You have a lot Gala going on, so I'm assuming you've been around for a bit. So Gala Games has been around for a little bit, um, but I joined to help with marketing about three months ago. And prior to that, Mar everything was essentially internal and there was not much of an outward face to Gala Games. And so I came in and I started organizing things and taking this tremendous amount of development and progress that was being done on the backside and showing it uh, to the world. And so here I am. And so okay. that's basically that's basically how that goes. Okay. Now... I've uh, got a chance to log into the main, uh, the app.gala.games, and um, I was uh, able to set us up or to set myself up uh, an account, and I got it, uh, the email approval, and then um, I took a look at the wallet, and I see that, uh, um, you know, I got my keys all straightened out and put to the side, and uh, good, so good, good. I have everything set up. Uh, I even went into the farm town, what is it, the town, town star, star. and um, 
uh, you know, secured a, a lot and had my guy running around and, uh, you know, I created a cotton field and uh, I sold some wheat uh, just to get a, you know, a feel of what's going on. And these are, you know, that's kind of like, people love that type of stuff, you know, where they, oh, they, they love get it. Their, they love it. Yeah. Yeah, it, 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 we, we have a very active user base that that plays Townstar regularly. And in fact, uh, starting December 1st, we're having a uh, month long uh, winter uh, competition in Townstar with uh, about five thousand dollars in BTC and Ethereum prizes for throughout the month. Um, so there's there's a lot of cool stuff going on there. And, and uh, our user base is very, very happy about that. Yeah, I would imagine so. That's a big chunk of change uh, to give out. Um, so let me ask you here. Uh, now, I saw mm -hmm. the Gala has their own um, ERC-20 coin. Correct. And so you can get it on Uniswap. Now, mm -hmm. obviously, you can import that into the game so that you can use it to spend as, as the quote value that you need to purchase things. Right. Can you, as you earn, can you export the gala so that you can convert it back into uh, what you know into well, ethereum again the the erc20 when you have that it's yours so whatever you want to do with it you know the, the reason that we did this is because we got really tired of playing games where you would get something okay let's say you you would earn some amazing new item playing a triple a AAA game you know like a triple a first person shooter think of like a gun skin or something like that and then you wouldn't really be able to do anything with it. When you were done playing the game, uh, it was like you it was useless to you. Or you would earn uh, points in that game, okay, and you would get rewards, but then you would never be able to export them. So everything that happens in the Ethereum on the Ethereum blockchain in connection with Gala um, is entirely yours. So if you win, uh, you know, Gala in a competition, that is your Gala. You can send it wherever you want. You can take that 12 word mnemonic phrase that you get when you set up your wallet and you mm -hmm. can import that into MetaMask if you want. Um, so it's super, super, super easy for you to, you know, move it however you would like. It's just a, another ERC20 in that regard. So we, we don't have a custodial wallet or anything. We can't touch anything that's in your wallet. Okay. All right. So uh, the value is not stored internally to the game. You're constantly going out Correct. to the blockchain to that wallet that's on the blockchain, right? And pulling from that. And Correct. We um, have a we have a, a, an Ethereum indexer that looks at the Ethereum blockchain, follows the contracts that are necessary for the game functionality. Um, so, for example, in Townstar. Uh, you probably didn't get a chance to do this since you just created an account, so you don't actually have any blockchain items. Um, but if I were to send you, for example, a fountain, okay, um, I can send you that. You could then place it, and the Ethereum chain would recognize that you have that item. The game would then pick up that you have it, and it would be made available to you in-game. And so it would always be yours. Okay. So that, that begs me to ask, uh, when you're sure. moving these items around from person to person, who's paying all the gas fees? The gas fees are paid by the users who are moving them. So, so typically speaking, there's not a lot of, well, no, that's not true. If you go to OpenSea, there's a tremendous amount of trade where actually one of the top traded uh, projects on OpenSea right now. Um, but uh, the gas is paid by users if you're moving items between accounts. All right. So, um, but, all right. So when you're playing in the game and you purchase something, obviously you're paying for that purchase. Um, right. Uh, uh, to use an item it, that doesn't require gas, though. So so when you when you place an item in game, there's no gas fee. It's just looking at the chain, recognizing that you have the permission to use that item and then giving you access to it inside the game. All right. So I'm going to have in my MetaMask or I'm going to see all my Gala. When I go to convert that Gala to Ethereum, obviously I'm going to pay a transaction, a, a gas fee. Sure, sure, sure. That. So you obviously need so much Gala to make that worthwhile. Sure, sure. Okay. 
Um, have you heard, uh, got any feedback on what the, currently uh, the gas fees have been for these types of transactions? Are, you know, they're still paying five bucks for... Uh, oh, for, um, for a, a, sip, a simple uh, transaction to, you know, convert via Uniswap or something like that. Obviously, um, it depends wildly on what the fees are at that moment. Um, I had a, I was sending transactions uh, yesterday and I was paying 14 cents for fees. Um, you know, but then I was sending transactions earlier this morning and I was paying $2 for fees. So, I mean, you know, it's right. sort of very wildly depends on the Ethereum blockchain. Very good. All right. I understand. All right. So, but that gives me a, a you know, an idea, you know, if, if people are just, you know, collecting wheat and selling wheat and then taking that earnings and uh, turning it back into Ethereum so that they're making a living off of ah. it or not. Or, or, okay. Uh, so need to need to correct a potential misunderstanding there okay. so in in the actual game of townstar itself when you sell wheat you're not getting gala for that wheat there is no ethereum transaction that takes place there the game runs for the course of the week and then at the end of the week the winners of the game are given gala as rewards for winning so so in the game the little little dollar sign up in the corner that's just you know your little in-game money Credit. specific to townstar yeah okay all that's right it's not so actually that... a blockchain transaction there Okay, very good. So that's an internal game uh, uh, credit or value system. Yeah, exactly. Okay, and so the only way to, to, to win Gala would be uh, at the end of the week or, or the end of the contest time that you would then uh, get a reward There's Gala. There's a few different ways to win Gala. That is one way. Um, if you're not into farming games, which personally I'm not, I'm not a farming game person, um, so that doesn't do much for me, but what you can do, okay, the best way to win gala, to win rewards, is to share the gala game system, the game platform with your peers. Okay, so if you, for example, uh, gala is distributed daily based on a, a distribution point system. So if you're operating a gala node, you receive a point. If you have referred a friend who has played Gala for three or played a game on the Gala Games platform for three days, you receive one point. Um, and at the end of the day, a chunk of Gala is distributed between all of those points. So the best way to get Gala is to get other people into the game with you, which makes it more fun for you because you're naturally going to want to play with people that you like, right? And it also can be potentially very rewarding for you. Okay. All right, that makes sense. Now, I'm looking at the, uh, let's see here, uh, the games themselves. Let's see, visit the store for Townstar. So they have all these different things that you can buy. Mm -hmm. um, yep. These are the ERC20 uh, uh, based tokens, uh, the NFTs? The, the NFTs are ERC1155 based okay. NFTs. So they're, uh, the, you're mostly familiar with ERC 721s. That's the common thing that everyone is sort of used to, right? Now, an ERC 11 or 721, um, there's ever, only ever one of them. Okay, each token is a token by itself. The ERC 1155s, you can actually have multiples of that specific token. So, for example, um, one of the things that we have built in the game is the concept of crypto crafting where you can take all of these ERC 1155s, package them up in one big gigantic transaction, all of these parts, which are what you're seeing on your screen right now, and right. then send a transaction with all of these parts. And then in re return, you'll get a little robot that you can use in your games, okay? And so a robot needs a hundred screws, for example, or a hundred bolts or whatever. And so the ERC-1155 allows multiples like that, whereas the uh, ERC-721 does not. All right. So it has classifications of uh, right. of the assets and subclasses and what have you. Okay. Uh, right, right. Very nice. Very nice. So uh, so these are um, uh, owned and so that obviously you can trade and sell these and mm -hmm. or, or what have you since you do own them. Okay. Very yeah. good. Very good. All right. That, that's pretty neat. Now... Um, 
let me, I guess before I start, I, you know, I punch you with all these questions. Do, do you want to, do you, do you want to have me look at something specific that's near and dear to your heart first before I, I you know, I go through okay, no, I, I'm, I'm perfectly happy answering questions. The only thing that I would, uh, main points that I would like to hit, um, and is that, uh, starting, and again, this is not airing until after this, uh, so, uh, but starting on Monday, or on Monday, the November 30th at 9 a.m. Pacific, uh, we will be announcing a partnership with uh, Brave Browser, and uh, you will be able to spend BAT inside of uh, Gala Games to buy deeds and whatnot for Mirandus, which is our upcoming RPG that's going to be coming out here pretty soon. And wow. I think that, yeah, I think that your people are really, really, really going to enjoy that because it's an entirely, uh, it's an entirely new type of concept that people are going to just go completely nuts over in terms of the land ownership and and whatnot so i'm excited sure about sure it. yeah no it's always good to have uh, extra coins and that's a great upgrade uh, to add uh, as a payment mm -hmm. it's a good thing you said that because i was going to show the payments area and i noticed the basic attention token listed uh, right. in the payment capabilities and so uh that's that's pretty awesome so uh, people can convert their their bat into do they uh, they can use that to buy in-game credits the the in-game money or they can they use can it to buy by the land deeds so those land, land deeds, deeds that you see if you if you click on the the miranda's portion of the store there you'll see a bunch of uh like things that look like scrolls those scrolls uh give you the right within the world of miranda's to basically stamp down your own little uh, village or town. Now within your little village or town, you can have other people come and rent spots from you to set up their own little stores. So a lot of times in, in role-playing games, okay, you have, it, 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 the focus is typically on adventure, like, you know, Dungeons and Dragons sort of adventuring, going into the, the crypt and, you know, chasing down the, the Leech King or, you know, things like, things like that. But the reality is, is that not everybody likes that. There are people who like crafting, for example, who want to make potions, who want to collect flowers or who want to explore or mine or build things, right? So we're creating a world that makes all of this stuff possible. And so you can, for example, if I have a town and you have a tavern, you can come and put your tavern inside my town. And then in your tavern, you can sell food and drink to adventurers and you can receive currency for that, which you can then convert to, you know, whatever you want to convert it to. And you would pay me rent for the spot that you hold. And so it creates this entire uh, ecosystem in which people can, you know, participate and connect and, you know, we're, we're, we're looking to build an entirely new world uh, in this RPG. And I think it's going to be something that people are going to be very, very compelled by. No, definitely. I, I, you know, the those types of games uh, where you can have the land and do those types of things is a, is real big uh, in a lot of the MM the, the multiplayer games. Um, so yeah, I'm taking a look here. So I see you can get something uh, like a, a, a homestead or an yep. outpost, and then work your way up to a village or a town, and then of course a citadel. I would imagine that each one of these has more space or... Yeah, yeah. The, hmm. the, citadels, the citadels are really special because there's only five of them in the entire world. And these five citadels, ownership of one of these citadels makes you a king, okay? You are a king in the land of Mirandus, and these five kings uh, each run their own kingdoms and, and how they decide to act changes the way that the entire world functions. And within the world of Mirandus, you have this uh, sort of ever present evil that sort of lurks in the background that if humanity, the players, okay, don't focus on eliminating that, then it will grow and get stronger and stronger. And so we're going to have this very interesting dynamic where people will either be able to fight against other kingdoms, you know, like they tend to do, you know, tribalism and whatnot, um, or unite to fight against the evil in the world. So it's going to be very interesting to see how it works. Yeah, and yes, the Citadels be. have massive amounts of space. 
and each each person who has a citadel will be able to work directly with developers to design it and make it exactly what they want wow wow that's yeah. pretty spectacular yeah and it look, doesn't look like i mean it's 50 percent off right now but uh, yeah, it's a, still a good chunk of uh, crypto now can uh, do you uh, also accept um uh fiat also or is this crypto only if if for a citadel if somebody wants to get involved with us at that level and work with us on a citadel we will accept almost anything um they can contact us through the website and just reach out and let us know that they're interested and uh they can reach out to me personally so bitcoin ethereum anything like that we can work with them for the citadel all right that makes sense and um so let's see here uh, two point 2.4 uh, million uh, basic attention token or 2.3 billion of the uh, of the gala coins gala, so uh, yeah. what does that come out to uh, in general a, uh, about uh, four grand a, for which for the uh, citadel yeah for citadel the, uh, in, the in, citadel in the citadels US of, in us dollars that fiat the citadel itself works out to be about half a million dollars half a million dollars okay yeah <laughs> yeah it's 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 it but but again <laughs> it's, he takes off his hat he takes off his hat i don't have a hat to take off i have a hat i can wave, wave around um he uh so so the citadel though people people when we first put this out here people looked at us like we were crazy okay people are like oh my god who would pay something like that but think about it. Like, if you actually think about what an economic system can look like in a world like this, okay? So you have, uh, let's let's take a, a game that people are familiar with, okay? Let's take a game like Farmville, okay? Everyone knows Farmville, right? right. Farmville had 34 million user, daily active users at its peak, okay? That's a massive, massive number of users, okay? Uh, you look at other games like World of Warcraft, okay? Um, you know, some of the more po popular MMORPGs out there. And you realize that what we're doing with Mirandus is we're creating an opportunity to bring almost everyone together into a game that they will have something for them in it. And then you, as a Citadel owner, okay, have the ability to build out a massive commercial empire inside your citadel with lots and lots of land that you can rent to blacksmiths and tavern owners and temples and and you know all of these different things and and what can that mean for you as a landowner who who holds that you know i mean within within crypto you have the ability to set up smart contracts however you would like you know, you can you can buy, lease, rent, whatever you want, all of those spots inside your Citadel. So, yeah, it's a big chunk of change, but then you're buying a fifth of a world, which, uh, right. you know, is 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 substantial. All right. That makes sense. So a homestead <laughs> at 484 bat, that's uh, about, about be... 100, 110 bucks or something like that. 110 somewhere bucks. In that, All right. So something that affordable that uh, you can get started in. If you decide well, to uh... even more than that tomorrow actually with the with the brave announcement the second tier of deeds the, so the small shops and things like that will start going on sale so you'll be able to buy farms and barns and things things of that nature which are uh -huh. the smaller plots that go inside and those start at about 10 bucks and about $10. so yeah that's it's much more much more reasonable but they're still pretty tightly limited in terms of quantity so so if it's something that you're interested in doing get in on it before they're gone because we're almost <laughs> right. at a, we're almost out of homesteads now you know wow. so. okay and that's only in the Miranda's uh environment yeah. now tell, tell us about that game i uh it doesn't have a whole lot on the uh, uh on on the website that kind of gives you I'm some actually, background <laughs> I'm pushing. Uh, I'm pushing a new update on that site later today. Um, uh -huh. But basically, what Mirandus is is it's going to be an open world RPG where you have the ability to uh, explore and play however you want to play. And within this world, you'll be able to do things like collect resources, create objects, 
uh, you know, go on adventures, battle, you know, and we want to bring back sort of the feeling of, are, are you a gamer at all? Have yes. you, have you played games? Okay. So yes. did you ever play EverQuest? Yes. Okay. So, so do you remember been many, <laughs> many years, right? It's, I haven't <laughs> many years, but do you remember in games from that era? when you left the safety of the city or you went out into the countryside, there was a little bit of actual fear. Okay. <laughs> you lose your guy. You lose your guy. If I die, there are consequences here. Yeah. Okay. Yep. One of the things that we wanted to bring back was sort of that feeling of, of importance to, to the gameplay. Which, which we all sort of internally, all of us feel that a lot of games have kind of lost that because it's very, it's very quick to, you know, you're very quick to like, oh, I'll just die and respawn, die and respawn, die and respawn. But we wanted to bring back a little bit of that feeling, right? To make it a little bit more serious. And so that's essentially where, uh, where we're going with Mirandus is we want to bring that back. And that's what we've been working on. So the game itself is going to be really cool. We've released a few uh, shots of where the direction we're going, and we have uh, every Monday we're putting out Miranda's Monday updates, so people can follow and see, you know, what else we have going on. Okay, and where, where are those updates that people can find it? As of my one of my audience can say, hey, yeah, I want to know about that. How do I do that? The easiest way to find uh, find out about what's going on is to you know hop in our Discord at galagames.chat or to follow our Twitter at Go Galley Games. And uh, both of those, you know, if, if you're in Discord, you will see me there. I am almost always there. As we're having this conversation, the bottom of my screen, you know, keeps having little things pop up and, you know, people saying stuff. And I'm always, I'm always, uh, you know, willing to pop in and talk. So if there's anything you need, just reach out to me. All right. That's perfect. So you want to go out to, to Discord uh, is the first place to, to do it and um, and keep an eye on Twitter. Definitely subscribe uh, if you're into yes. gameplay. Um, I know that the uh, the town, I know uh, there's a good group of people. You know, it's something that's kind of fun and they like to, they're hunter-gatherers. They like to gather things yep. and, and put it together. Uh, the Miranda uh, seems more like open, like a sandbox type of thing. Um, yep. You were talking about, you know, there's going to be uh, consequences for leaving your little area. Are you going to have like a Badlands and then a safe lands where you can explore? Uh, so so in the game uh property is protection okay if you have a low level homestead for example um you know it has a little tiny rail fence that goes around it and that little tiny area is protected okay so if you're in your homestead and you're not in a particularly bad area you are completely safe within the bounds of your homestead now if you take your homestead and you plop it down next to a really uh really difficult dungeon that has a really nasty boss in it okay uh you may not be safe okay so <laughs> so basically you you the, the the different level of protection that you have the walls of your city will keep out monsters up and up to a certain level okay um and there there will be epic monsters that uh you know, may be able to cause you more trouble. And, and we're designing the world so that it's actually reactive. So that if you, for example, um, if you have a, a dungeon that has, you know, the Minotaur King in it, and you have an adventurer that goes down into this dungeon and stirs up that hornet's nest, okay? The Minotaur King is not just going to sit there. You may mm -hmm. have him mustering his armies and coming out into the world where he will have to be confronted by players. And so, so that's, you know, that's sort of the dynamic we're working on. And so, but, but the important thing here is that having a deed gives you some degree of safety. If you have a deed in your house, you have a bed, you go to sleep in your bed, you wake up, you're healed and you're safe. Nothing can happen to you while you're inside your house. Um, and then the rest of the land around you you know, that, that depends on where you are and what your levels are and things like that. But it's, it's, it's a pretty, pretty interesting system. Oh, Michael yeah, McCarthy, the, 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 the lead designer on it is, uh, is a brilliant, brilliant game designer. He actually made one of my favorite, um, RPGs of all time called Arcanum, um, mm -hmm. which was, was super, super cool and super, super rich. He was, uh, 
I don't think he was creative director, but he did a lot of the art on the game. And so he has a, a very good mind for these sorts of concepts. And so I'm really looking forward to see as this, this advances. Yeah, no, definitely. Now, in the Mirandus, is uh, is it going to be uh, player versus the monsters, or will it be player on player? In other words, do I have to worry about you know somebody who has tons of armies and or people or things to come over and burn my house down and burn down my fields? Or, T- or typically, you know? typically, it's not being designed to be uh, PvP. Okay, uh, so there may. Okay, I don't want to like plant a flag and say this is the way that things will be, but there may be places that that are that that, that rest- restriction is relaxed or removed. Um, for example, there may be designated like PvP arenas um, and mm-hmm. things like that where people can go in and 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 fight if they would like to. Um, but nobody likes to have the PvP experience where you know you're just minding your own business and somebody. You know, fifty levels above you rides up and whacks you on the head, and exactly, no, nobody, nobody likes that. So, so we're we're not we're not building to uh, incentivize that sort of experience. Good. All right. So, so it sounds like a lot of fun. Uh, I'm not going to hold you to it. Uh, the the game release uh, activation. Are you are we looking mm-hmm. at the shortly, or we, we looking at the next quarter, or? We would like something to be playable uh, by users in 2021. Um, this is a big game and it has a pretty big development timeline. So it's not really, sure. uh, uh, again, this is a AAA level game. This is not your typical like crypto little game. This is a, a very meaty uh, development project. So 2021 is when we would like to have some of it playable. That probably won't be the final release. Um, but some point in time in this in this coming year. Okay, so when you say in this coming year, are we are we talking quarter one or are we talking quarter four? <laughs> Pro- probably probably having a playable alpha Q three or Q four. Q three Q four. Okay, very good. All right, so we got uh, so we have some time. So basically, this is your yeah. like your Kickstarter to get things going, uh, generate your. Uh, your resources to do your development. Uh, you guys have all the concepts down, and no, we'll be uh, we'll be doing the development regardless. The development is is happening regardless of how uh, the 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 land goes. Um, okay. This is a game that's getting built. We just wanted to give people the opportunity to be a part of it um, at the beginning because once people understand, once people really really get what we're building, they're going to go nuts. Sure. It, so, so, so this is this is a an opportunity to be an early adopter, um, and you know, like you said, a lot of people aren't aware that we're here yet. This right. is, right. you know, you you popped in and you're like, who the hell are these guys? Why do they have this gigantic wing? What's going on? Um, this this is is we've been running in submarine mode for quite a while now. And what we don't like to do is we don't like to, you know, we didn't, we never had any ICO. We've, we're 100% self-funded. We are, you know, designing and building. We have a team of 14 developers that are working, you know, nonstop on this. So this is not your, your typical, uh, you know, little tiny bootstrapped thing. Um, and I think once people understand that and once people really get a feel for what we're building and the fact that we are consistently delivering, then they will get excited. And this is an opportunity for people uh, to get in before anybody else knows about it. You know, okay. we can be that, that, that little secret opportunity that they discovered that, uh, you know, they get to tell their friends about later. Absolutely. No, th- th- those are always little fine, uh, fun little nuggets to find. Now... Uh, do you have any place, is it on your Discord, or is there some place where somebody can see maybe um, like some game uh, action, or or you have the still pictures right now? Or where the, does the still one's pictures are out. In- the, the Mirandus Monday updates um, in, in both Discord and Twitter um, are the best places to see new things as they come out. Um, you know, we're, we're constantly developing and building. We've got a bunch of different partnerships that are being released here, um, shortly, 
uh, as well as some other games that aren't even on here that people will be hearing about um, quite soon. I don't want to put a timeline on it, but quite soon. <laughs> um, you know, so so that's probably the best place to find uh, new information. And just keep okay. an eye on that because there's a lot of stuff that's going to be coming up here shortly. All right, that makes sense. Let me ask you this. Up at the top of the page, I noticed nodes. And so I'm taking a yes. look at this here, and uh, mm -hmm. it appears that I can set up a computer uh mm -hmm. to donate to the environment um uh, i would assume that you earn some gala maybe or uh, tell yeah. me about it so so basically the way that our node system works and and i can actually i'll send you in telegram here a link to a, a little bit more involved document that we recently posted on our medium that shows where this system is going but essentially right now the the game nodes are used essentially to verify transactions as they move across the Gala Games network, okay? And what happens when you set up your node is you will receive a point in the distribution, okay? So every day you will receive a certain amount of Gala and when, when they are dropping, you may receive NFTs as well. And as the system evolves, these nodes are going to start specializing and becoming, you know, various different things. We will have some nodes that operate as proof of work, some nodes that operate to provide storage to the network and whatnot. And so essentially buying a node license um, gives you the ability to get into this ecosystem. There's only 50,000 of these licenses uh, in total. Um, and yeah, that's, that's essentially how that works. And it will be a much more... Uh, evolved system in the future um i'll send you that link so you can take a look at it yeah no i would be very interested okay so and we're looking at nine million gala uh to buy a node currently it's yeah it's about here. about two thousand dollars <throat> about two grand okay and then you can set that up on one of your servers uh, is it uh, it's super it super light so so right now you could set it you can easily run it on a laptop at home just set it up it just needs to be on for six hours over the course of the day um and that requirement may change to more in the future we'll probably allocate more points based on more hours online but that's essentially the the requirement the yeah, because I, 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 I have rigs that I run, you know, mining and stuff like that, and and they could easily be running. Uh, um, yeah, I would you imagine definitely this is all GPU based. Uh, well, this right this now? right now, these are so so lightweight, so they're not even GPU based. They're they're processor based, but it 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 barely takes anything because they're not doing heavy computation. So personally, I run my nodes. Um, I have a few of them. I run on uh, headless uh, Linux boxes, you know, VPSs that I've set up. So, you know, they're not heavy computationally. In the future, you will have the option to run heavy computation if you would like. Um, you know, we know there are a lot of people who run miners and want to, you know, mine. Um, but we, we wanted to set this up so that it was easy to spread to the rest of the world. Right now, crypto is very unfriendly to newcomers. And if you wanted to get into mining, like, oh my God, the massive headaches that you you as a newcomer trying to figure out what the heck anything means um, is really a challenge. And so we wanted to kind of go in a new direction with that and make it something that's very easy and very accessible. And so that's what we've done. Okay. So it doesn't run on uh, Windows, it runs on Linux. Well, you can run it. We have we have Windows, Linux, um, and Mac, so you can run it on pretty much whatever you want to run it on. Very nice, very nice. Yeah, that's something uh, I'm going to look into because uh, I'd be neat to run on the side, and uh, you know, as the game progresses, uh, it should hopefully one day pay for itself. That's me saying that, not you. <laughs> but uh, well, um... recent, recently, um, there were so node owners. Uh, when there are drops of NFTs, okay? So as a node owner, you contribute to the network. As a reward for that, whenever we create a new uh, group of NFTs, a certain percentage of those get dropped at random to node owners, okay? And so recently there was uh, 
a village. I want to say it was a village of the Baron um, that was dropped to a node owner, uh, which is a, one of the Miranda steeds. And uh, he turned around and sold it on OpenSea for uh, $6,200. You know, so not not bad for, you know, something that gets uh, dropped into your node for keeping it on and, you know, approving some transactions. Sure, sure. Not, not to... Not to not to say that those happen all the time, okay? Just just putting that out there. But there's always you that find possibility, a buyer, right? Yeah, yeah. It, it's it's uh, it's out there. But uh, you know, you hold on to it for a while, and if the game becomes real popular, there'll be people wanting those things. So, and then you yeah, may want to yeah. just keep it and use it, you know. So it's. Uh, I I, I have a few needs. Like I cannot wait to play this game. I am so excited about it. Um, and one of the one of the favorite parts of my week are being able to sit down and talk to Michael about, you know, the next steps, where the direction that things are going, you know, the art, working on the logic, you know, planning the economy out within the game. I love it. It's amazing. Okay, but the Scala node supports all the games, doesn't it? Not just yes, the, correct. Yeah. So, so the, uh, the, the 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 first fifty thousand nodes uh, will support all games. So. Everything you know that we do, you will be able to, uh, <clears throat> you will be able to help support and earn rewards for helping to support. Very nice, very nice. All right, so there's a lot of good stuff there. Um, games inventory. All right, I think I've hit everything that I was looking to to know about uh, these two games, and uh, it, it's nice to see that uh, you have the town star up and running. Uh, it's uh, yeah. kind of fun to tinker around with. You can play for a few minutes or, uh, you know, I'll spend the whole day on it if you want. So uh, it's pretty exciting. You know, you, um, you are you going to be adding more different types of payment methods uh, to the games? You know, I had some suggestions for you on that if you do. Uh, there, we're always, always looking for... I personally believe, and this is one of the things that I like about this particular market space, is that everything is better if we work together. The more we collaborate, the stronger we as a community get. And so um, I don't think we're necessarily opposed to adding new potential uh, payment options or to you know form partnerships with uh, other organizations because... Ultimately, I think that if we work together, this can be something that is helpful for all of us. So, yeah, absolutely, we're, we're... absolutely. That that makes a lot of sense. Uh, that's um, you know, Dr. Agro from Splinterlands is the uh, same type of thing. You know, he yep. wants to get everything yep. working with everything, and and it's good. It's good to see that you guys are on that same path. Um, you know, that's why I would. Uh, uh, you know, recommend, uh, you know, I, I was going to recommend Electronium only because they have so many users. And I know that mm -hmm. when Splinterlands added them, um, they were, you know, they added basic attention token and Electronium. And I, and I happened to know Electronium did, uh, uh, brought a lot of um, players to the game. <laughs> so, uh, well, I, you know, you may want to take a look at it. I certainly would, would love to, uh, love to, ch to have a chat with them. That would be yeah, that would be excellent. You, you do, you do. Uh, you know, you, we'll. Uh, I'll send you some you know, email addresses and what have you. Okay. Uh, once you talk to them, you'll find out why uh, you're going to want to add it to the game. But uh, you guys can make that decision yourself. But I do sure. recommend it and um, uh, have you take a look at them because uh, there's. Uh, you know, there are folks that uh, like to play these types of games and uh, users will use that. For sure. Um, and because the big key is that a lot of people um, earn Electronium doing gigs and then they, you know, find ways to spend it. And uh, right. that makes it, and I'm sure they would want to play, uh, you know, entertain themselves and play a game with it. So um, this is fantastic. You guys look like you're up and coming uh in the in the quality of the games and uh and what you're putting together you're giving uh, you know the technical guys a back end with the nodes uh, you're having the ability to uh, to win or earn uh some gala uh through the tournaments and contests uh, ownership of um, the tokens and the land in, in the new game so you can uh, sell it later on if you want to cash out um yeah it's it's fantastic this is the and this is what i was telling you before 
the older, the legacy games, they don't want to touch this because they want to sell everybody a 99 cent skin. And they're not thinking, yes. you know, to set up a market and make 5% right. and let it sell 20 times and, you know, get your 5% Exactly. That no, it's, 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 it's a very, it's really weird. Um, sorry, my camera has just come out of focus. There, no, not yet. One second. Um, yeah, no, it's very weird when you, when you look at, uh, Oh, that is really irritating. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> I'm all fuzzy. What's going on here? Fuzzy wuzzy. Uh, That's all right. I get go. that way all the time. I usually I, I there we squint go. my okay. eyes. Um, <laughs> you know, no, it, yeah, it always bothers me when that happens because I always feel like maybe there's something wrong with my eyes and then I look at you and you're still clear. So, you know, I'm like, okay, well, anyway, um, <laughs> Yeah, no, we're 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 working very hard to uh, to to drive this forward. There's a lot of a lot that we have coming in the very very near future, and I'm just absolutely delighted to be a part of this. Uh, and no. I think that that through all of us working together and having opportunities to to chat with people like you, I think that uh, we really want people to see what we're building and to see how we stand out against the the you know sort of normal gaming companies out there that like you said do want to sell you these 99 cent skins over and over and over again um you know we want to give freedom to the user that's what it's all about to build a better world to advance freedom through play no that's exactly uh, how i see it and i think that you guys were given a window of opportunity because they're refusing to do it. Uh, that you, you guys will be able to come in and fill this this void uh, yes. rather quickly before they have a chance. If they were smart, they would have grabbed it, but they're leaving it open. And uh, quite frankly, I don't see why I would spend money on, on a game that, that goes away and I have nothing at the end of it, even if it's half of you know what I put into right. it, um, where I could... Uh, um, have ownership and uh, and go that way. I, nobody's going to be doing that. And, and by the time they figure that out, or should I say, I, I'm sure they figured it out. I just don't think that they want to execute that model. And by the time that they get around to doing it, I, it may be too late for them. So, um, you know, I congratulate. Here's the hoping, right? To, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Because, you know, obviously they've got lots of muscle behind them. And uh, well, to do again, one of the things that I would like to emphasize here is that we want to help them as well. Okay, if you're a big, gigantic game studio and you don't know how to integrate blockchain into your games, talk to us. We do, we can help you, um, we can help make this easier. And I think that, um, you know. A lot of a lot of the the sort of centralized world uh, gets really concerned about blockchain things. They don't understand what's going on. Um, but I think that once they really get a taste of it, okay, and they understand that, look, by giving people things, by making gaming better for them, it makes things better for everybody. Uh, once they realize that. I think that they will begin to come over and we're, we're here to help them if they, they make that choice. Oh, that's fantastic. That's, uh, that's good. And, you know, maybe they could put the Gala coin right in there, in there and use that to go forward, you know, and, uh, do it and add it to it. So, uh, it's all a very interesting, um, it, it's, a, it's an open field, something that I'm going to be keeping my eyes on. I'm, you know, um, I started writing video games in 79. And oh, nice. I was the first people to do as such. And because uh, uh, there were very few machines that could actually do those things. But, um, you know, I was Compute Magazine and we wrote some, some games and, and it was fun. And, uh, uh, you know, it's kind of a, a circle for me to come back and uh, be involved some way uh, in uh, playing with games and, you know, and talking about it you now. And, yeah, it, uh, it was a lot of fun back then. Uh, obviously, uh, uh, you know, I wrote games up until the 90s, but... Uh, oh, really? Everything is, yeah, everything is completely different. I, I stayed in software and hardware for about 
35 years, 35 years, and then um, I got into, um, I, I have a prop company now, so uh, okay. we take uh, sculptures and we'll blow them up, like Coca-Cola will make a giant bottle, Coca-Cola bottle. Um, nice. Actually, we just signed a deal with Splinterlands, uh, where we're going to make little models of all the characters in the game and, and Brilliant. offer that. Yeah, so it'll be a lot of fun. So I, it's kind of fun to be part of it again, you know, and be back into uh, into games. Well, uh, even hey, though. man, wel welcome back. And and I'm sure there are, there are things that we could potentially do with you as well. We need to get some... Uh, one of the things that we're launching on Monday are these really nice uh, physical NFTs. Uh, which are basically laser etched crystals that have one of the the Miranda's characters in them, and then a unique claim code that you can go to our website and enter in, and you'll get an NFT sent to wherever you want it sent to. Um, we're doing this so that these can be given out as Christmas presents. Um, you know, so so I'm sure there are different ways that that we could potentially uh, interact, and it's nice to personally in my family we have pretty deep history in computing. Uh, and it's nice to uh, it's nice to talk to somebody else from the bad old days, of, uh, <laughs> you know, things like that. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. yeah no, it was a blast. It's a lot of fun. But yeah, that's fantastic. Well, I, I'm gonna wish you guys the best, and um, I'm gonna probably hit you up for more information as we go along. Or if sure. you have an update, you send me a telegram. Say, Dino, I got something I have to tell everybody. And uh, we okay. need to get on your show to do that, and we'll make that happen right away for you. Um, it's fantastic. I'm going to keep an eye on you guys. I'm going to tinker around and, uh, please, and, uh, please. and learn a little bit on the Discord so I can do some more videos um, as you release information. I can do some videos telling everybody about it. So uh, it's been fantastic, okay. and I do Thank you appreciate so much, you. you know. yeah, Thank you so much. I appreciate it.